Stanley Kubrick is widely acknowledged as one of the most accomplished, innovative, and influential filmmakers in the history of cinema. During his 40-year film career, he is credited with directing 13 feature-length films. Four of his films, Spartacus, Dr. Strangelove, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and A Clockwork Orange, are listed in the American Film Institute's list of the 100 best American movies. 2001 A Space Odyssey is also listed as the number one science fiction film of all time. Senior NASA Apollo Administrator George Mueller and astronaut Deke Slayton nicknamed 2001's Borehamwood England production facilities NASA East after seeing all of the hardware and documentation lying around the studio. There are lots of near mythical stories about Kubrick's comprehensive research. That he was probably the most meticulous of film directors known to man is not open to debate. Alex Godfrey, Stanley Kubrick's Napoleon, a lot of work, very little actual movie. In 1980, Kubrick produced and directed the psychological horror film The Shining, a film based on the Stephen King horror novel of the same name. King had written a screenplay adaptation of his novel for Warner Brothers before Kubrick became attached to it. But Kubrick chose not to read the script because he decided he wanted to infuse the skeleton of King's story with his own ideas. Stanley Kubrick by Vincent Lobruto. Many of King's fans truly hate the film as it doesn't accompany the book's ideas very closely. Most of the plot is there, but its message and emphasis is very different. The reason Kubrick wanted to infuse his own ideas into The Shining and not follow Stephen King's script is because he was making a confession, a confession to the whole world about his participation in the Apollo 11 moon landing. It was all a hoax, and he directed it. Sound ridiculous? Yes, it really does, but Stanley Kubrick coded The Shining with his confession that he directed the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. Let's take a look at some of those codes. The music accompanying this scene is dark, serious, and somber. The musical piece is based on Hector Berlioz's interpretation of Dies Irae from his Symphony Fantastique. Dies Irae is Latin. Translated into English, it means Day of Wrath, Judgment Day. Dies Irae is best known from its use as a sequence in the Roman Catholic Requiem Mass. A Requiem, or Requiem Mass, also known as Mass for the Dead or Mass of the Dead. It is generally used for funerals. The lake is surrounded by spectacular mountain scenery. The sky is reflected in the lake.
The reflection from the sky and the surrounding mountains formed the letter A in the lake. What does it all mean? It means a monumental event symbolized by the mountains appeared to take place in the heavens above the sky. But in reality, it took place right here on the earth, sky reflected in lake. And the name of this monumental event begins with the letter A. The monumental event begins with the letter A. Kubrick will now take us on a journey in a yellow VW to reveal the name to us. The name of the road the yellow VW Beetle is traveling on is Going to the Sun Road. In the book, The Shining, Stephen King's VW Beetle is red, but for the film, Stanley Kubrick changed it to the color yellow. The color yellow is associated with enlightenment, caution, deceit, cowardice, and the sun. The yellow VW Beetle is traveling on going to the sun road, which leads to going to the sun mountain. Kubrick is taking us on a journey to enlighten us about the sun. Do you know who the King of the Sun is? The King of the Sun is... The Greek Roman God, Apollo. Apollo, the name of NASA's project to go to the moon. The name of the monumental event which appeared to take place in the heavens above but in reality took place right here on the earth is Apollo, Apollo 11. Jack Nicholson plays the main character Jack Torrance in the Stanley Kubrick film The Shining. Jack is businesslike, practical, logical, and rational. Danny Lloyd plays the main character Danny Torrance in the Stanley Kubrick film The Shining. Danny is intuitive, unpredictable, and introspective. Kubrick makes it clear that Jack and Danny are the same person through a typed line in the film. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Jack and Danny represent two sides of one person. Jack and Danny represent film director Stanley Kubrick. Shelley Duvall plays Wendy Torrance in The Shining. No. 
Think of Wendy Torrance as Christiana Kubrick, the wife of director Stanley Kubrick. Jack Torrance, Stanley Kubrick, is driving to the Overlook Hotel, NASA, for his interview. Kubrick gives us an aerial view of the front of the Overlook Hotel. At 2 minutes and 56 seconds into the film, he focuses in on this area in the scene. The roof at the front entrance of the Overlook Hotel is shaped like the letter A. There are 11 cars parked in the first row of the hotel. Kubrick also gives us a date in this scene by way of the vehicles parked there. The vehicles underlined in red provide the month, the vehicles underlined in blue the day, the vehicles underlined in yellow the year. Here's the date. The date is 72169 72169 the date nasa gives for man's first step on the moon kubrick is revealing the true story of apollo 11 and man's first step on the moon on july 21st 1969 Jack enters the hotel and walks to the reception desk. Eleven people appear in the scene. Another tip from Kubrick, the interview is about Apollo 11. The sign in the lobby reads the Gold Room. The Gold Room contains 11 letters. Apollo 11 is the focus of the interview. The interview is about to begin. The actor Barry Nelson plays the part of Mr. Stuart Ullman, the manager of the Overlook Hotel. He is wearing clothes with colors of red, white, and blue. Almond represents the government of the USA, more specifically NASA. This meeting is taking place in a NASA office. Jack Nicholson plays the lead character Jack Torrance in The Shining. Jack represents the director Stanley Kubrick and his experience with NASA in producing and directing the Apollo 11 moon mission. The number 11 is formed by the frame of the window. The eagle sitting on the windowsill between the number 11 represents the Apollo 11 lunar module, the eagle. The room curtains are a representation of theater curtains. The Apollo 11 mission and moon landing was a theatrical production.
The sill of the window represents a theatrical stage. The Apollo 11 mission with the lunar module Eagle landing on the moon is a staged event. The glass behind the eagle, it symbolizes the material scotch light from 3M, which Kubrick used on the film 2001 A Space Odyssey to project images on it while filming scenes with actors. Scotch light contains microscopic glass beads. Kubrick used the same material for moon image backgrounds in filming the astronauts. In the 2010 study, a stereoscopic method of verifying Apollo lunar surface images, Apollo 15, by Ukrainian physicist Dr. Oleg Olenek, he concluded that The two eagles in the office represent the two Apollo 11 astronauts in the lunar module Eagle, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. The radio communicator, NASA Communications, and the eagle, lunar module Eagle, were never far from each other. The lunar module was not on the moon. NASA hoaxed the moon transmissions. While Jack Torrance, Stanley Kubrick, is accepting the job at the Overlook Hotel, NASA, Wendy and Danny are at home sitting at the kitchen table. To the right side of Danny, Kubrick, is a glass of milk and a movie camera. The name of the book Wendy is reading is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. The Catcher in the Rye is a coming-of-age story 
narrated by its central character, 17-year-old Holden Caulfield. He addresses the reader from a mental hospital where he's undergoing treatment. He tells a psychoanalyst about events which took place over a few days the previous Christmas in New York City. The major themes in The Catcher in the Rye are innocence, isolation, death, childhood and growing up, sexual confusion, authentic versus phoniness. Phoniness is the most famous expression from The Catcher in the Rye. Before Holden reveals the events to the doctor about his time in New York City during Christmas, he first mentions his older brother, D.B., a writer. D.B. wrote a volume of short stories that Holden admires very much, but Holden now believes his brother is prostituting himself by writing for Hollywood movies. The name D.B. Caulfield has 11 letters, another reference to Apollo 11. Kubrick reveals to us that he has prostituted himself by directing the phony Apollo 11 moon landing for the NASA elite to make the films he wants in Hollywood. Jack calls Wendy to tell her he has accepted the job. When Wendy answers the phone call from Jack, it is exactly 11 minutes into the film. Another Apollo 11 reference. There is a maze at the Overlook Hotel. Try to find the Overlook Maze. Can you see the Overlook Maze? It's in the back of the Overlook Hotel. Do you see any large maze in the back or any place else around the hotel? The truth is, there is no maze anywhere around the hotel. Did Kubrick make a mistake here? Not at all. The maze in The Shining represents an inner maze which Kubrick is guiding us through to reveal to us the truth about the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. The inner maze is the Apollo maze. The triangular hedge designs on top of the hedge maze give the appearance of the letter A, referring to Apollo.
Wendy and Danny enter the Apollo 11 maze. Afterwards, Jack is seen watching Wendy and Danny in the maze. The codes are clear. The Apollo 11 trip and the eagle landing on the moon, the totems, the ball being heard 11 times hitting the wall, the Adler typewriter, were all controlled by Stanley Kubrick as represented by Jack Torrance. Stuart, Jack, Bill, and Wendy going to the Gold Room. The Gold Room contains 11 letters, another reference to Apollo 11. Entering the Gold Room, the number 11 can be seen on the back wall. In front of the number 11 is a ladder shaped like the letter A. One more reference to Apollo 11. Mr. Halloran, the head chef, Wendy and Danny, leaving the gold room for the kitchen. Entering the kitchen, Danny tells Halloran it's the biggest place I've ever seen. And Wendy says, Yeah, this whole place is such an enormous maze. I feel I'll have to leave a trail of breadcrumbs every time I come in. Kubrick is telling us he has left clues about the Apollo 11 maze. As Wendy, Danny, and Mr. Halloran walk through the kitchen, Halloran says to Wendy that the family could eat there for a whole year and never have the same menu twice. When Mr. Halloran says the word menu, the menu appears to the left side of his head. Looking at the menu, we can see 11 lines on it, an Apollo 11 reference. As they enter the freezer, Halloran says, now this is where we keep all of our meat, and then tells us the contents of the freezer. The contents are 15 rib roasts, 30 10 pound bags of hamburger, 12 turkeys, 40 chickens, 50 sirloin steaks, 2 dozen, 24 pork roasts, 20 legs of lamb. When we add the numbers of the contents, 15 plus 30 plus 12 plus 40 plus 50 plus 24 plus 20 equals 191. 1 plus 9 plus 1 equals 11. Apollo 11 is the meat. As Halloran, Danny, and Wendy walk away from the freezer, the menu board with 11 lines appears to the right of Halloran. Kubrick is giving another code about Apollo 11. As Dick Halloran is about to open the door of the storage room, he says to Wendy and Danny, Now this is the story room. He doesn't say storage room. He says story room. Kubrick is telling us there are codes in this room. 
Now, this is the story room. Danny in the story room. Here's the story. Golden Ray. Ray is Spanish for king. The golden king is reference to the king of the sun, Apollo. 11. The number of the Apollo mission to the moon. 39. The launch pad number of Apollo 11. Tang, the drink advertised as being taken to the moon by the astronauts. The twins represent NASA's Project Gemini, the project that preceded Apollo. Astronomy, the twins, a zodiacal constellation between Taurus and Cancer, containing the bright stars Castor and Pollux. The twins lie in the corridor, brutally murdered. Three lights are reflected in the window. What does it all mean? The three lights in the window represent the three NASA astronauts who died in the Apollo 1 fire on January 27, 1967. Roger Chaffee, Virgil Gus Grissom, and Edward White. The upper light, as seen in the middle of the window, represents Roger Chaffee, as he only participated in Project Apollo. The two lower lights, plus the murdered twins, represent Virgil Grissom and Edward White. Both participated in Project Gemini and Apollo. The number 11 can be seen between the two elevator doors. Another tip from Stanley Kubrick, the film is about Apollo 11. The red elevator doors are symbolic for communism as it is associated with the color red. During the Apollo missions, the USA was involved in the Vietnam War, fighting against the communist red state of North Vietnam. The closed elevator doors symbolize being trapped. With the war in Vietnam, the American youth, those 18 and up, were obligated, trapped, to serve in a war they had no control over. Project Apollo took place during the Vietnam War. The blood symbolizes all the lives lost by all sides during this horrific war. The Vietnam War lasted for 19 years and 180 days. 
from November 1955 to the fall of Saigon on 30th April 1975. Estimated overall casualties 5,773,190. Estimated dead 2,122,244. How many objects do you see on the carpet? There are 10 objects, including Danny. When the ball rolls up to Danny, there are now 11 objects on the carpet. Take a look at the pattern on the rug where the toys are arranged. Does that pattern remind you of anything you would see at the National Aeronautic Space Administration, NASA? This is what a NASA launch pad looks like. This is 39A, the launch pad of Apollo 11. The boy, Danny, symbolizes Stanley Kubrick. He is kneeling in the center of an imaginary launch pad. Look at Danny's sweater. There is an image of a rocket on it. Not just any rocket, a very special one. Danny begins to stand up. The rocket is beginning to lift off. Look at the name of the rocket on the sweater. And the name is Apollo. More specifically, Apollo 11 USA. Danny Stanley Kubrick is the Apollo 11 mission. The Apollo 11 rocket begins its journey down the corridor. The journey of the Apollo 11 rocket brings us to a room with an open door. Room 237. In the book, The Shining, the room number is 217, but for the film, Kubrick changed it to 237. Here's the true reason why. The Moon. The natural satellite of Earth, visible by reflection of sunlight, and traveling around Earth in a slightly elliptical orbit at an average distance of about 381,600 kilometers. The American Heritage Science Dictionary. 381,600 kilometers converted to miles is 237,000. Room 237 represents the moon. Danny enters room 237, the moon room. This is where Stanley Kubrick films the Apollo 11 moon landing.
Danny comes out of room 237. He has marks on his throat and his Apollo 11 sweater is torn. His mother wants to know what happened to him, but now he won't speak about what took place in room 237. Kubrick has been forced to remain silent about the Apollo 11 moon hoax. Stanley Kubrick, through the character of Jack Torrance, is introduced to the project of faking the Apollo 11 mission to the moon by the NASA elite. He is shocked. As he sees the project right before his eyes, the seduction begins. The project draws closer and closer to him, and he draws closer and closer to it. The project begins to embrace his mind. He begins to embrace it. Completely seduced by the project, he fully embraces it. He will fake the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. The horror of what he has perpetrated for NASA and upon the world grabs hold of him. He escapes. Wendy and Danny are watching TV. But there is one problem, 
Can you see what it is? The TV set is not plugged in. What's going on here? Let's take a close look at this room. The window in back of the TV forms the number 11. This refers to the Apollo 11 mission. You cannot see images on a TV set that is not plugged in, so the images are not real. With the unplugged TV set in front of the number 11, Kubrick is telling us the images we saw on TV from Apollo 11 on the moon were not real images from the moon. One more thing about those images on the TV set. The film on the TV set is Summer of 42. The title of the film has 11 characters in it, another reference to Apollo 11. Just one more thing. The winter outside. The winter represents the Cold War. Project Apollo took place during the Cold War conflict between the USA and the Soviet Union. This is the typewriter Jack Torrance, Stanley Kubrick, is typing on. The name of the typewriter is Adler. The word Adler is German for eagle. Notice the color of the typewriter. It is a cream color. Now pay close attention. The color of the typewriter begins to change color as the movie goes along. It becomes darker gray in color. Why? Ron Punter, a scenic artist on The Shining, was told by Kubrick to repaint the typewriter a shade of gray during production. 
During the film, you see it transform from cream to gray. The Adler Eagle typewriter is completely gray. The Adler Eagle typewriter is completely gray. Why did Kubrick do this? Adler is the German word for eagle. The name of the Apollo 11 lunar lander is eagle. The color of the surface on the moon is the color gray. There are two columns, one on each side of the staircase. The columns form the number 11, representing the Apollo 11 mission. Eleven's on the left side and right side upstairs. Working between the two columns is Jack Torrance, representing director Stanley Kubrick. He is sitting between the number 11 columns as he is the man in the middle of the Apollo 11 mission moon hooks. The images above the fireplace are Indian totems. Kubrick chose them because they give the appearance of rockets blasting off. Wendy, representing Christiana Kubrick, discovers what her husband has been working on. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. What does it mean? All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Apollo 11 work and no play makes Stanley Kubrick dull. The Golden Ray Box. The word ray is Spanish. Translated into English, it means king. The golden king is the king of the sun, or in other words, the Greek Roman god Apollo. Apollo is also the name of the NASA space program. The Apollo insignia shows the face of the sun god Apollo. The Apollo 11 spacecraft was launched on July 16, 1969. 
1969 from Kennedy Space Center, Launch Complex 39. The launch pad was 39A. Tang accompanied the astronauts on the Gemini space flights and all U.S. space flights through to Apollo. Good morning, Prince Units. Dawn greetings, young one. What would you like for consumables? Pop-tarts, chicken embryos, seasoned patties of ground animal flesh? Mm, I'm not really hungry. Just some tang. Ah, tang. The drink the astronauts took to the moon. Astronauts to the moon. First appearance, count the cases of 7-Up. Six cases of 7-Up equals six Apollo missions completed out of seven total missions. Second appearance, Count the cases of 7-Up. According to NASA, there were seven missions to the moon. Six were successful and one failed, Apollo 13. The soft drink 7-Up is next to the wall, near the fire alarm. Six cases of 7-Up equal six Apollo missions completed out of seven total missions. Danny, Stanley Kubrick, writes the word red rum in the middle of the door. Looking at the upper part of the door, we can see the two panels form the number 11. This refers to Apollo 11. Below it, we see the word Danny Kubrick wrote reflected in the mirror, murder. Jack, Stanley Kubrick, is about to axe the number 11 on the door. The axing of the number 11 on the door begins. Kubrick is murdering, killing, destroying the official story of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Let's take a ride on a very special yellow Volkswagen Beetle. Jack Torrance, Stanley Kubrick, is driving a yellow Volkswagen Beetle to the Overlook Hotel. The hotel represents the place where he will eventually film the Apollo 11 moon landing. But what does the VW Beetle represent? Let's have a look. Volkswagen was originally founded in 1937 by the Nazi trade union, the German labor front. What do Nazis have to do with Apollo 11? 
Let's find out. So, the yellow Volkswagen Beetle represents the Saturn V rocket used in the Apollo missions, which Werner von Braun and his Nazi party team of rocket scientists designed. And Jack Torrance represents Stanley Cooper, the one who is really driving the vehicle, the one who really took us to the moon, not the Saturn V rocket. As Jack, Wendy, and Danny Torrance drive to the Overlook Hotel in the yellow VW Beetle, Kubrick has more to tell us about the Saturn V rocket. Jack, Wendy, and Danny inside the yellow VW Beetle. The Torrens family arrives at the Overlook Hotel. The scene switches to the inside of the hotel. Kubrick shows an A-shaped ladder with boxes and luggage behind it. Kubrick is calling our attention to the Apollo 11 load carried by the Saturn V rocket. Take a look at the luggage the Torrance family brought to the hotel in their yellow VW Beetle. The Beetle could not carry all this load to the hotel with three passengers inside it. It's impossible. Kubrick is telling us that the Saturn V rocket could not carry its load to its destination.
And let us not forget, the color yellow is associated with the sun, enlightenment, caution, deceit, and cowardice. Have a safe journey to the moon.
will you get out of here? Certainly, Doctor. I've seen everything I need to see. Thank you very much. Hi. Sorry to bother you. I'm Klaus Hergersheimer. G-section. Checking radiation shields. Come on!